This episode of More Stories is brought to you by Ting, T-I-N-G. Ting, please visit j.ting.com for $25 service credit or device discount. You're thinking to yourself, what the hell is Ting, JJ? I'm going to tell you, relax. Ting is mobile that makes sense. Ting is a no BS mobile service. Ting is an MVNO of the nationwide Sprint network. It's a reseller and they do it well. No contracts or ETFs. That's how Ting is different from everybody else. Truly and completely contract free. No early termination fees or other BS. No overcharges or penalties. If you use more than you thought you would, just pay for what you used. Credits on unused service. If you use less than you thought you would, Ting drops you down to the level you hit and credits the difference for you on your next bill. Ting is everything you want this to be, you guys. No add-on charges, voicemail, caller ID, tethering, hotspot, three-way calling, call forwarding, and other features are all part of the service. No add-on charges with Ting. No mysterious line items on your bill. Ting charges for what you use, plus whatever taxes were legally required to collect no hidden charges no hidden recovery fees or other baloney unlimited devices on one plan i'm telling you guys i wouldn't sell you something that stinks have as many devices as you want on one plan sharing pooled minutes messages and megabytes each device on a plan costs a flat six dollars per month that is amazing no hold customer support call us one eight five five ting FTW anytime, anywhere between 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and a real person will pick up the phone, not some automated robot saying, Press one, press five. No, people at Ting will talk to you and break it down. Forums, video tutorials, video startup guides, and much more. Excellent online support. Ting does not carry the iPhone, but we're working on it, and Ting does not do rollover minutes. Ting is who brought you this episode of More Stories. Visit j.ting.com $25 service credit or device discount now I put my name on it put your name on it just put your name on it that's all I say be a man or a woman put your name on it well, I'd like to hear about it potheads how the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness look at the game change donuts if you want a battle with either that you will say yes we're you know you're not a bad looking man Mr. Gals but you are Blanche you are in that chair There's something wrong with us, something very, very wrong with us. Finn the human and Jake the dog. Well, are- yeah, that's it. That's the one. You, my friend, John DiMaggio. <laughs> we, you are probably one of my absolute oldest friends in comedy, next to Barry Katz. Man. Next to Barry Katz, man, unbelievable. I'm You're telling you, man. The guy I've known, pro- maybe longer. We go than back. Any- we yeah. go back to nine ninety one. Yeah, you predate even like Neil Brennan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You predate all these dudes, man. All of them. Because we were with uh, Barry together. Man. Neil Brennan said, uh, John DiMaggio, of course, is the voice of Jake the Dog in Adventure Time. Did you ever do Dragon Tales? I thought I heard you on Dragon Tales a long ass time ago. The future, yeah. It's down on Dragon Tales. You were a Rhino in Spider Man. Right, yeah. Yes. Uh, tell us some Sandman, other. Sandman and Spider Man. Spider Man. What does Sandman sound like? I forget. Man, those vo- there's so many voices in my head. How do I know Sandman's line wasn't, I forget? Oh, shit. Sandman was actually Sandman was kind of a Jersey guy. He was kind of you know one of these guys. Totally, he was a he was a Jersey guy. That's I do remember that now. And Jake, it seems to be like your your dream. Jake's gig. my normal voice, but kind of just a little, a little kind of you know he's kind of just hey okay he's hanging out with a kid and he's trying to be his, you know he's his best friend and everything. But every once in a while, Jake turns into like one of Fred Sanford's friends. Yes, he does. Say what? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Just everyone's hey, man, say what? And every once in a while, he just he, get what to the he back say? of the line. Yeah, play, <laughs> play, 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 boy. I think he said something <laughs> to the extent of, um, "You smell like rainbows," and oh, I can't remember. It was, um, <laughs> it is it was the like, Rainbow Princess? Yeah, and yeah, he was. Yeah, he no, he was talking to his girlfriend. He was talking to Lady Rainicorn. You smell like 
Like, <laughs> you, I don't know what you smell like. Just make like, it girl. up. I, just, so- <laughs> I will tell you this, girl. You smell like rainbows, and and if cotton candy took a poop, that would be it. All delicious. God, delicious. did you ever think when you were in a comedy team performing for 40 people on a Tuesday night in Greenwich Village that yeah. you'd be the number one sought-after voiceover guy for hey, cartoons? You know what? It's crazy, man. You know, we this lifetime... This lifetime is full and large and long, and it is so much. It is long, and like I mean, gonna... it's just crazy, man. I, I, I'm blown away sometimes about the life that I have. It's really well. You're supposed to be dead. Yeah, you had uh, AIDS. I did have AIDS. <laughs> I totally had AIDS, but I got rid of it, man. I, you what know, I got rid it? of that shit. How did you get rid of it? I fucked the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Fuck no baby. No, I didn't have AIDS. It's pretty funny. No, you had blood clots. No, I had no. You had like super problems. For real, you had no. No, I had. I had a. I had some serious health problems, and I still. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't. I still kind of do. It's just. It's just a condition that I have. It. My blood clots quicker than than others. So a lot of Jamaicans are fucking totally calling me blood clot all the time and it pisses me <laughs> off. Blood clot. Blood clot, man. No, um, no, seriously, I have a, my, my blood clots phaster than most and uh, phlebitis runs in my family and what are you going to do? It's, it's hereditary, but you know, years of smoking cigarettes and, and boozing uh, up. You and, know what? You know, I'm not so sure about the cigarettes. I was just talking to somebody the other day. I was actually at a tattoo place, and the girl said, she's telling me and my wife that she quit smoking, and it was really hard. And I was like, smoke? She goes, what? Like, no one ever tells somebody that's trying hard to quit that right. just, just don't quit. Just smoke. And she right. goes, why? I go, I've seen a lot of old motherfuckers smoking. i never seen a yeah. fat old guy. Yeah, ever. Yeah, ever. that's true. I've you never seen you're... a fat old guy like waddle into the shuffleboard court <laughs> at the old folks' home, but they all what? go that's out really, back for their cigarettes. That's really funny. Like, and it, maybe it ain't that bad for you. You know, you know, anything in moderation is all right. You know, including moderation, including moderation. Neil Brennan famously said on this podcast that you guys, Red Johnny and the Round Guy, was the name of the comedy team, and watching you guys destroy and kill was so incredible. No one had a rise the way you guys had, but Neil Brennan said, and no one was more. It was never. No one. How do you put it? It was never more. No one was more fascinating to watch. Bomb. Yeah, we, you guys when we st- bombed, whoo, there was a lot of hate on stage. <laughs> there was a lot of hate between two motherfuckers that just wanted to, I wanted to kill that dude. Do you remember what I told you guys about being the greatest comedy team of all time? I said, all you have to do to go down as the greatest comedy team of all time <laughs> is what? Do you remember, you don't remember. I don't remember. Dude, stay was, together. Stay together. Yeah, that's it. That. Yeah. Anybody that's you know a comedy what? team listening to this, if you stay together, you stay together just through yeah. attrition, you're going to yeah. be headlining everywhere. That's true. That's, I mean, the fucking Sklar brothers, for Christ's sakes. They, they fucking... They, what? They, they bought... The sad thing is there's three of them, oh. and they cut one of them. <laughs> yeah. They cut one of them out. <laughs> that's fucking great. Mickey Sklar. Jason, Randy, and Mickey. Mickey, really? Mickey they don't get Mickey... Mickey they get, cut Mickey out. No taste. Jason and Randy... Yeah. They're ruthless, bro. Those fucking guys. They, I think they bought, I, I think they bought the, uh, bought our act for like two hundred dollars off of, off of, off of, off of the round guy. Let me tell after you, after a fucking bender. If I saw Randy and Jason <laughs> rapping, living check to check, oh, that would Christ. be worth it. I, I would love that. You, you know had, what? The, no, those guys. It was ah, oh, those guys. I don't. I still kind of have a. A, a thing about those guys about other comedy teams eh, no no about them really specifically why they're Just, completely yeah they fucking they kind of fucking did our act they did our act after we stopped doing it and which ones in particular because i can't imagine them rapping oh they did i think they well they i'm odd and i'm odd too and we're here to talk to you about <laughs> no, your thoughts no, used no, guns and ammo right <laughs> I remember oh, the whole God. thing. You remember our, you it's, totally it's remember our act. I'm Art and I'm Art too. There are two guys named Art. Yes. And we have Art's used That's guns it. and ammo. Route 18 East Brunswick. <laughs> you need a 45? We got him. You need a 22? We got him. You need a shell shock? We, we got him. We, we got, got them too. too. <laughs> I know the act. Jesus, man. It's That's been killing for oh, me on the oh road. <laughs> um, oh. So, Tim, you and Tim, your partner, break up. How do you know? Is it, It's like ending a marriage, I guess, because there's. it's like if a marriage made money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's worse than a marriage. 
<laughs> it is. Because in marriage, is. you go, well, it was, it was, yeah, let's it, split up and you will split it 50 50. But it's not like you and your wife go on the road and like your head, you don't headline with your yeah. wife. Well, we didn't, you know, listen, this is the funny thing about like, you know, uh, making money as a, as a comedy team. You don't make as much like, you know, I would guess half. We, yeah. I mean, hello. That's called math. M A T H math. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was hard, man. It was just hard, and and he was an asshole, and and we weren't, you know. You guys were polar. Out. Let me just for the listener, and for Tim apologists, Tim was more <laughs> difficult to get along with, and if Tim was quote the asshole. You were completely like uh, the guy. You, you you never would say anything to go across the grain to a fault. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, so yeah. So it was yeah. almost like you guys were the perfect yin and yang. Yeah. And I think the only person you would actually go, no, man, that's f-, was Tim. Yeah. Like the only guy you would actually yeah, step yeah, to with an point. opinion was that's was good, your was a, your partner yeah, on that's stage. A good point. Yeah. But me and you and like Dana Cola and a couple of guys rolling around town were like, well, we want to go to 150th Street to buy crack. You'd be like, I guess we'll buy crack. Now. <laughs> like, let's hop on the cab and buy some crack. Yeah, oh, come on. And you would just get in the cab and go where to, and you go 155th Street. <laughs> you, would just, you would just have a voice to go along with it. That's pretty funny. And then the only time you would step up and go, "No, asshole, this is what how I feel." Was with the guy was with the guy that was, that you shared a stage with. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's totally. I, I, I'm going to psychologically break down your entire. Yeah, you totally are, man. Why are you fucking? Why are you doctor filling me? That's fucking. How's that blood? working for you? <laughs> Seems to me like See, somebody is airing well, dirty laundry. What you're doing here is you're talking about guy who is from my past. I don't know. He's. You know what? I wish him well. Who wrote most of the stuff? Is it is it truly it was, collaborative? No, it was truly coll- it was it, I it was collaborative and t- towards the end I was I was I was doing a lot more writing. Um and that probably bothered him. No, it, it bothered the sh- it bothered the shit out of him. They can't all be him, I didn't need him around. Like that was the I mean it was like, you know, and he was he just struggled with it. He struggled. You were like Farley esque. You were like the the big guy. You were much lo- one hundred and fifty pounds larger than you are now, and you're still a large guy. No, no, no. I wasn't. I wasn't that big then. I'm, Just I'm, go I'm, along I'm, with I'm, it. All right, I'll go along with it. You yeah, know, I was you, huge. But you were larger. Than. Fr- you're the only fr- guy I've ever punched fr- and hurt fr- my hand, my wrist, my elbow, and my shoulder. <laughs> we were in a cab pulling up to my apartment. Oh my god! And you kept grabbing us and shaking us, and we kept going, oh. Uncle Johnny, stop it! That's right. You were so big, you could grab two other grown ups. <laughs> And shake us in each hand. So don't play down how large you are. <laughs> and then I, I in the cab that. went, that's enough. And you're wearing a denim jacket. Yeah. And I just, with everything I had, right hook, sitting in a cab, I'm on Johnny's right. So with my right hand, which is against the door, I go across the cab. And I hit your upper arm. And like like in the cartoon, like it just turned to granite. I and broke into a billion pieces. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Like I tried to play it off. But in the elevator, I'm going, how does my why does my shoulder blade hurt? <laughs> like all the bones in my knuckles hurt. Oh God. And I was like, that's a big guy. And you you were like the first peek into why guys that weigh 170 pounds shouldn't fight. Because <laughs> there's guys that weigh 250 that's, that when you hit them, they don't really feel it. Yeah. Well. You're not gonna hit your friend in the Adam's apple. No, no, don't. You know, man, those those days, we cut we cut our teeth. We just cut our teeth in New York. Don't you think now what's missing from comics? And I, I've said this, and you, because you've pretty much tapped out at stand up comedy. right? Yeah, I don't. I, I I'm I'm good. I I'm good. Uh it seems to me now you being an outsider looking in now because now you're making your money doing the voiceovers. Yeah. And you got a documentary you're working on. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Talk a lot about that. It just did something on Newsroom with Aaron Sorkin. It seems like middle acts are ruining comedy because they have access to social media. When you and I were cutting our teeth and we hated the headliner, we would talk about it in the car and then show up to the place and try to blow the fucking guy up the stage. Yeah. That was our only exactly. way. That was our only way to, that was to our only curry way to, favor. Exactly. And it was a hundred people at a time in that room. Yeah. And now like your MC you can just go on Facebook and go, that guy's a fucking dick and his act and you're like what are you doing? Yeah. No, it, you know what? It, 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 you, 
it's so funny that that you end up saying, you know, oh, kids these days, they don't know what the hell's going on. But it's true, man. I mean, we we had to 